Hi, I'm Sandy, and welcome to Life with Sandy. Well, good morning. Today is Friday, May 6th. And we do have some birthdays. It's out, it's early again. Oh, yet again, another early morning. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But we have birthdays. Well, we have one birthday. Today is Terry Evans, and her channel name is Terry Evans Living WW. It's Terry's birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Terry, happy birthday to you, cha cha cha. And then we also have an anniversary, it's a 50th anniversary, yay, Gary and Kathleen, it's their 50th anniversary, and her channel name is Kit Kat 10, so Gary and Kathleen, Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary. Well, I hope you have a great anniversary, 50 years, yay! I don't know how many people nowadays are going to reach that, that are just getting married now, but anyway. Um, anyway, it's early. My, uh, brother-in-law has to go to the dentist to uh, get a tooth pulled and he doesn't drive and uh, my sister usually brings them and this is just a clue as to how tired my sister is I mean she is working from home the dentist is only maybe driving about five minutes from her house so she could very easily have driven Don dropped him off, went home, worked, had him call when she, he was done, and come back and pick him up. It would have been like a 20 minute total, it would have been like a break. But that's how tired she is that she called and asked me, and I have to drive 20 minutes to get to her house. But I don't have a problem doing that, I really don't. I'm, I'm just saying that, just to show you how tired she really is, because Mary would have never, 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 never asked. Mary doesn't like asking. Pretty much all of us in my family, we don't really like asking for help. I know that's like, that's a character flaw. I understand. But, you know, we were just brought up that you should do it yourself. But, if you can't do it yourself, you always have family. Because that's what they're there for. Yeah, I think I'll wait. You're coming up a little, coming up a little bit too fast. Okay, now I can go. Um, anyway, so I said, I of course I'll bring them. So we're on our way there. I brought up my book. Hopefully I can finish it. I keep putting it. I'm not in a reading mood. When I get in a reading mood, oh, look out. I'm reading like two, three, four books at a time. This lately, I don't know. When I, once I can get outside and sit on my deck and start reading my books, it really makes a whole big difference. And then uh, the consensus is and I kind of leaned it your way anyhow, but I was kind of thinking, I was on the fence, is to leave my shower bench the way it is. And I was leaning that way too, but I thought, well, maybe I'm just being silly, you know, whatever. It would match more, matchy poofy and all that. But, um, no, I decided I'm going to I'm gonna keep it that, I'm going to keep it like it is. And then a couple of you pointed out, which I never even thought of, that it'll make it a little bit more slippery since it's uh, quartz. I remembered since it's quartz it's going to be a little bit more slippery and I never thought of that either <coughs> so thank you very much for your opinions and we have we have decided we're going to keep it the same 
And then what else is there to talk about before we get on the expressway? Because you know I don't talk when I'm on the expressway. Like especially this time of the morning, I like to really concentrate on where I'm going. But uh, you know, it's just enough rain in that I gotta have the monster somewhat. And then, but the white the windshield doesn't get wet enough that you don't have to hear that <laughs> noise. Oh, we went for Jamie's graduation dinner. I'll tell you about that later because. Uh, it's not that it's a long story, but we're almost on the expressway, so I was going to let you out, but there's nobody behind me, so you can just wait for that. Um, anyway, I had a really, really good time last night. I really did. And I I ordered Polo Mala Mamacito, I think it was Polo Mama, no, not Mamacito, that's, uh, that's Spanish, isn't it? It was Polo Mama something Italian. And it was grilled chicken breasts in a lemon garlic butter sauce. Okay, that tells you right there it was way over my points. With mushrooms and artichokes. With a little tiny little side dish of mustacholi. Very small dish of mustacholi. And uh, what else do we have in there? Oh, minestrone soup. It was the best minestrone soup I've ever had. It was, it was delicious. And then I had iced tea. So it was it was a delicious meal. Look at we're getting on the expressway and I'm still talking. It doesn't, oh my goodness, there's hardly anybody on the road. And then that's not a good sign. Because people that travel on the road all the time know if there's a problem and they take a different route. Because there's so much construction going on around here lately. But anyway. So, well we were going to the, I'm going to talk to you anyhow. I'll just stay in this. I'll just be more cautious of where I'm going. Um. We started going, we've never been there restaurant. We put it in Google Maps. And we were going, going along, driving along. It took a little while to get there. And uh, it said the restaurant was on the left. Your destination is, you know, quarter mile on the left. So we kept looking for it, we didn't see it. And Jim drove by it and he says, oh my gosh, I think that was the restaurant right there called Da Francisco. The Fr Da Francisco, I think it was called. And uh, he says, I think we passed it. And then we looked and I said, yeah, that looks like it. So he went and he pulled into the, like a bridal shop to do a turnaround so we could go back. And as we're turning around to come back to turn right to go back to the restaurant, we look across the street and there's, big as you please, Don Francisco's, which is where we wanted to go. And I said, that looks more like where we want to go because that's like a class. I looked at the menu before I left, so I knew it was going to be expensive. I said, that's going to be... That's going to be the be that's going to be the restaurant. He says, "Yeah, I think so too." So we went, and it was it was the right restaurant. And then um, we got in there, and I was talking to Jamie's boyfriend, who knows the owners. His uh, father even has a dish named after him. Uh, but anyway, he said, "No, they used to be in the other location, but it was too small, so they built this one where we went." And uh, so that's where we ended. You know, that's where. So we were in the right place. But uh, I said, well, then why do they light up the other restaurant? He says, oh, for advertisement. And I'm thinking, I think you lose business unless people actually get out of the car and go up to the door to see that, well, you know, we've moved. See, I knew it. I knew it. Should have got off. Everybody stopped. I should have, I should have uh, trusted my judgment. I really should have because this is, this is not good. Darn, 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 darn. I'm going to be stuck here in traffic. Okay, buddy, what are you doing? Are you going to go in front of me or behind me? Because you can, can only go one way or the other. <sighs> See, this is what happens when you're not a daily commuter. You don't know. But anyway, but it was a really nice restaurant. The food was really nice. They had a, a live piano player that, you know, played music. They had a dance floor. They didn't rush you. They had people everywhere servers everywhere it was just amazing how many people they had serving everybody and uh it was just a really nice it was just a really nice time we were there a couple hours well i'm home now and i'm editing the video and i realized there was something i was going to bring up like a pet peeve i have of mine about uh when jim and i go out to eat um 
I just think that you should dress appropriately for the places that you're going to be going. <clears throat> and before in the morning, I looked up the menu because I wanted to see how much it was going to cost. So I'd make sure I had enough money when I to bring with me. And uh, as it turned out, Jimmy paid for everything. That was so nice of him. So I didn't even have to worry about that. But I had told Jim, I said, I would say by the prices on the menu here, this is going to be a really nice restaurant. So it's not going to be like um, a Texas Roadhouse type of, a, of attire. We need to get dressed appropriately. And so he said, oh, okay. So then uh, he was in the bathroom getting ready. I heard him. And he was in there for a little, little while. And then he came out, and he, I heard him go in the other room. I thought, oh, it's my turn. I'll go in and get ready. So, I, you know, I picked up some really nice, a really nice sweater. And, you know, I looked, I think I looked really nice. And it was time to leave, and I come into the living room, and I look at Jim. <laughs> I was like, oh, my goodness gracious. Did you not hear me this morning when I told you that it was a nice restaurant? He had on some old jeans that I wouldn't wear to Taco Bell, and a, a T-shirt that's uh, with a... Uh, a Jaws theme. We're going to need a bigger boat. And I said, Jim, that is not what we're wearing. That is not what you're wearing. I felt like a mother telling him what he was going to wear. I said, if you're wearing that, we're not sitting together in the restaurant. I said, because this is a nice restaurant and you need to dress appropriately. <gasps> so he went in and changed him because he's got nice clothes. I don't know why he doesn't like getting dressed into him. And he come out, he looked so nice. And then uh, we got to the restaurant and Jimmy was in a, a a shirt and tie. Uh, uh, Samantha had a really nice pantsuit on. Her daughters had dresses on. Her father had a really nice sweater. Uh, Jamie's boyfriend was dressed, you know, like uh, appropriately. And uh, so then Jim looks at me and he says, I, I should listen to you more often. Yes! But anyway, back to sitting in traffic. Do I got to get over? It seems like everybody seems to be getting over, but I don't know. I don't know if he's just getting over because of that, because it looks like, I don't know. I am not one to be stuck in traffic. This is, this is, this is not me. And I could get off at the next exit, but that's even worse because I know for a fact that there's construction on that exit. But I don't know. It looks like it's in the center lane, so I'm going to stay here, even though everybody seems to think that it's better to be over. See, and this is my big pet peeve, is when people drive on the median, or, you know, like the side of the road, the breakdown lane, just to beat you, because, like, they're more important. they got to get to where they're going sooner. Which brings me to my weight loss. i got to get to my place. I keep thinking i got to get there sooner. And I always say, what's my hurry? But, and I always said when I was a little bit younger, because I'm still old, that no matter what, how old you are, you know, you can still lose weight. It doesn't really matter. Well, now that I'm getting older, I'm realizing that it was kind of silly to think that because it's, it's getting really hard now just to lose some weight. But, you know, I'm determined I'm going to lose weight. I really am. But, um... It's just really hard. It's just so hard. Well, I'm going to have to call Mary to let her know I am coming, but I'm running late, so I will talk to you guys soon. Two hours later, <laughs> to quote SpongeBob, I finally worked my way up to the exit to get off, which I knew was going to be a really bad exit. Anybody that's familiar with the area, Hall Road and Grasshopper, it's terrible. <sighs> But the problem being that there's no, in Michigan, we call it a Michigan left, where you have to go past the light to turn left to turn, to turn left. Michigan, yeah, is it a Michigan left? Yeah, Michigan left. You got to turn, go past to turn left to turn right. I know it makes no sense, but that's what you have to do. And when I got up to the point where I was supposed to go there, I noticed that they're not, they closed off the turnaround lane. So I had to go the other way, and it's like, oh, my goodness. So the point where I have reached now, I'm glad I left early. He called his dentist to let him know he's going to be a little bit late. I left about 20 minutes earlier than I needed to be because I thought it, I always like to think it's better to be there before early than late. But it has taken me 45 minutes to get to this spot which normally would have taken me eight minutes to 
to say I'm frustrated and thankfully there's no food in the car <laughs> just my water but anyway so, so I was telling you about how it's getting a little bit more difficult to lose my weight I'm I'm not quitting I'm not you know but and I'm not discouraged and I'm not disappointed it's just a realization that lose it while you can when you're younger is my point if you're younger even if you're just like to me you're younger if you're in your 60s <laughs> okay the bus is blocking the way this is ridiculous see this is what gets me they think that they know that they're going to make the clearing for the light they know this but yet they continue on so the light is green but the bus is blocking both lanes of traffic so nobody well now we can move I was doing all my complaining now we're moving we're moving, we're moving, like in stripes. Um, oh my gosh, we're moving! Yay! We just had to get past that bottleneck. But Jim had an appointment this way too today. I called him, I said, you know, you should see if you could change it to this afternoon or just don't go today. <laughs> it's like, I said, because he was going to take rash instead of the uh, I-94. And I said, um, we think that, we think it. So I guess he's going to call and see if he can go in the afternoon. His, his chiropractor he goes to is really nice. He's, he's just starting his business, so he doesn't have a lot of patience. So he can has a lot of wiggle room. And we have excellent insurance, and so he doesn't want to lose Jim. He's even told him that. He said, you have excellent insurance. I'm going to do everything I can to keep you as a patient. <laughs> you don't want to lose him for nothing. But anyway, so... We had a good time last night. Jamie had a few, kicked back a few too many drinks, but she was fun to watch then. You know, people that are drunk are always fun to watch, unless you have to live with them. But, I mean, you know, they're, they're the, if they're a happy drunk, they're fine. Reminds me of a story. I'll tell you the story. I've told it before, but for my new subscribers that maybe never heard it, uh, when we first got engaged, uh, my mother threw us an engagement party in the basement of the house. That's we always. My mother had so many parties all the time. But, uh, so she, for this party, and my uh, father had a friend of his that built a bar in the basement. So there was a bar in the basement. So everybody would sit around the bar in that. So it, yeah, my, I didn't, I never really drank. I, I was never a drinker. But Jim always was a drinker. And he was, he was standing there with my Aunt Agnes, who could hold her liquor. <laughs> And so she uh, she said to Jim, she says, we ought to do a Boilermaker. Do you know what a Boilermaker is? And at the time, Jim didn't. He was like 19, I think. And he says, no, what's that? She says, well, when you take a glass of beer and you drop a shot in and then you down it. Jim says, oh, I think I could try that. So he did. Loved it. So him and my Aunt Ag were just going crazy, going back and forth, back and forth, drinking. And uh, Jim seems to forget that my Aunt Agnes at the time was in her 50s, and so she's been drinking for a while, and she knows how to handle her liquor. Jim has only been drinking for a couple of years. Eh, you don't really know as much as you think you know. And Jim got drunk. Oh, my gosh, he got so drunk, embarrassingly drunk. And he would start laughing like a fool, like a blubbering fool, just laughing, laughing, laughing. And then my Aunt Agnes would say, Jim, what's so funny? Why are you laughing? And then he'd think a minute, and then he'd start to cry, literally cry, have tears rolling down his face, crying. And she says, well, why are you crying? He says, because I don't know why I was laughing. He says, I don't know what's going on. And then then burst into laughter, saying how funny that was, that he didn't know why he was crying. And so he was alternating back and forth between crying and, and laughing. Well, when the time, when the party was over, there was no way Jim was going to be going home. So he slept in my brother Pat's bed. Because my brother Pat was uh, at a, a Cub Scout function in like a camping trip or something. And so he slept in Pat's bed. Well, in the morning when we were sitting down for breakfast, because it was a Sunday morning before we were going to church. We always had breakfast before we went to church. Um, he said... Uh, my mother was giving him breakfast, and Jim was eh, still not feeling too much pain. And so my mother was so serious. My mother was a jokester. I think that's where I get it from, too. And she looked at Jim, and she said, you know, Jim, you know how much I love you and how much I really wanted to throw this really nice party for you. So it didn't really bother me that you were drinking because you're in the service, and, you know, you're protecting our country, so I don't have a problem with you drinking. And I didn't really care too much that, you know, that you drank too much. 
I didn't really care that you embarrassed me in front of my friends and neighbors. But I'm going to tell you, and I didn't mind that I had to keep you here overnight. Uh, but I'll tell you what really embarrassed me the most and what really made me mad was when last night when you had to go to the bathroom and you didn't know how to do it and I had to bring you in there and help you along. Jim was mortified. He just like looked at her and he, my mother was so serious and she said, it's not like I've never seen one before. I've never seen yours though, but I, and I hope to God I never have to see it again. And I hope we never have those circumstances. And so Jim says, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. And we're all sitting at the table because we know it's not true. And we're all trying to keep a straight face. And then all of a sudden we couldn't help it. My dad started laughing. And we all started laughing. And then Jim says, what's so funny? My mom says, that never happened. She says, but that just shows you that you could be a blackout drunk. And I know what, you need to control your drinking, buddy. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cute. So... Every once in a while, my Aunt Agnes afterwards would always say, Hey, Jim, let's do some Boilermakers. Jim would say, uh, No, thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to fall for that trick again. But anyway, I don't know that Don's going to let me put you on camera. He's Mary's husband, obviously, because that's where I'm going. But uh, not that he's a shy guy, but I always ask people, and if they don't want to be on it, I don't put them on it because... Not everybody loves the glamour of all the gl glitz and glamour of a YouTube channel. But and then when we were at the dinner last night, uh, I was sitting next to her, her friend Deneen and uh, her husband Dan, and we were exchanging um, shows on Netflix that we got to watch because we both we both were like big Netflix fans, and we were comparing notes. Oh, there's my mechanical man. He's gone out of business. He's no longer there. I miss him. Say a prayer for my mechanic, Mark. He has prostate cancer and not a good prognosis. So we just want to pray that he has a peaceful journey because he's a stage five. So anyway, all right. I guess I'm done rattling on. I should probably stop here because we're going right past Aaron's store, his Boston Market. It's not his, but he's the general manager and all, not the owner. That would be nice if he was the owner. Well, maybe not so nice with the owner, but anyway, for um, breakfast, I'm going to have a bowl of Rice Krispies with my banana and some orange juice, but not in the Rice Krispies. Roy at Recipes with Roy told me that Tropicana has a cereal that's um, made for orange juice. It's an orange juice cereal. I'm thinking, I should have patented that, because I put my Cheerios, though. I don't know what kind of cereal it was. I couldn't tell what kind of cereal it was, but it's from Tropicana. And I guess they took a survey, and there's a lot more people than just me that do that, so I'm not that odd. There's a lot of other oddball people here. Oh, look at this. We're going to make this in plenty of time since I made the correct decision to get off the express away. So, um, and then for dinner, you know what I'm going to have. A fish sandwich with some cucumbers and tomato probably. Alright, this is, I can't believe we finally made it to our first destination. But that, that's going to do it for now. Unless I can get Don on the camera. Um, I'm going to tell you to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. You'll probably see Oliver tomorrow because uh, I have to. I don't have to, but I, I'm going to watch Oliver while Danny golfs. If it doesn't rain. If it rains, obviously he's not going to golf. But I, think, I don't think he's going to be golfing. Because this rain is supposed to last a couple days. So... All right, here's Dan waiting for me at the door. Let me get my stuff out of the way. Talk to you soon. Look at that fat robin. Them things are big. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe how many squirrels you got. I know you feed them. <laughs>